Hey everyone, Chaylen Jackson with Senior Marketing Specialist. Rachel and I just got done recording an episode of Medicare Industry Insider, and while we had the camera out, I wanted to get you some information about Part D and creditable coverage for 2025. I have gotten so many questions about this that we couldn't help but make a quick video on it. There are obviously going to be some changes, so we want to help those folks that have employer insurance and are working past 65 avoid those late enrollment penalties. And of course, with the massive changes to the Part D program, there have been major concerns from group brokers and Medicare brokers alike that many plans might not be creditable next year. And a lot of folks are specifically citing the $2,000 max out of pocket, changes in plan design and cost sharing for some of those reasons that plans might be non-creditable. And frankly, it's true. Many plans will not be creditable next year, but not all of them. It is not quite the, uh, the landslide that we thought it was. There's a couple things to consider. So some plans require... Uh, actuarial equivalency testing. So if you're talking about a plan that is applying for the retiree drug subsidy, meaning they're getting payments from Medicare because they're insuring people over the age of 65 for their drug coverage, those plans have to do a full actuarial equivalency test. Many of those, unless they drastically change their benefits for next year, will likely be non-creditable. But Certain self-funded plans, plans not applying for that retiree drug subsidy, can use what's called a simplified creditable coverage determination process. Now, that process hasn't changed since 2009, and many plans that currently use that simplified determination, if they use it again for 2025, many of those plans that passed in 24 will still be creditable in 2025. So it's not going to be all plans, just things like the egg whips, employer group waiver plans, any other plans that are require, uh, applying for that retiree drug subsidy, those plans will be pretty severely affected by the changes in Part D coverage. Now, for 2026, CMS has already said, hey, we know this is a problem. We're going to look at that simplified determination process, and we're going to make some changes. We have to. Just Part D benefits are so rich now that it doesn't make sense to keep doing what we've been doing since before the ACA was enacted. So we will see changes for 2026, but for 2025, any plan that is currently using the simplified process and is currently creditable is very likely to be creditable next year. Plans that have to do actuarial equivalency testing, very likely to find they're non-creditable for 2025. Now, how are Client's going to be aware of this in their annual notice of change or a separate notice from their group plan. They should receive a notice of non-creditable coverage before October 15th each year, typically around renewal, typically in that ANOC, and they'll be able to see that they need to shop for a plan. So what does that mean for those beneficiaries? This is the frustrating part. People are between a rock and a hard place because their choice now is to either continue with their group plan and not pick up Medicare, which means they are going to eventually accrue late enrollment penalties for not having creditable coverage, or they can pick up at least Part A of Medicare and a Part D plan, which can potentially impact them financially because if they have any part of Medicare, they are no longer eligible to contribute to a health savings account. So you have folks that may need to make a choice between a lifetime penalty for late enrollment or the ability to contribute several thousand dollars a year to a health savings account that might serve them well the rest of their life. This rock and a hard place situation is going to affect more and more people over the next couple years and educated and informed agents like yourself are the only way that people are going to make the right decision. It's going to be a little bit different for everybody, but now that you better understand how creditable coverage is going to work in 2025, hopefully you can take this information, share it with your group broker friends, share it with anyone you know that is currently on a group plan, and use that to drive sales, drive education, and create resources for those beneficiaries. As always, if you've got any further questions about creditable coverage or anything happening this AEP, reach out to the team here at Senior Marketing Specialists. We'll be happy to help.